the over there, bottom of the left column. <clears throat> good morning, everybody, and Zoom, everybody here. Good morning. Let's learn some cities together. There's nothing better than to start off your week with a little bit of Torah. So the Alter Rebbe is talking about the concept of Gevura, the concept of a, a, a Gevura by the Abishta is as we say, you know, you mentioned it also yesterday, Oysa Shalom Bim Reimov, that the Abishta said, we keep on saying at the end of Davening and the Kaddish, we say, Oysa Shalom Bim Reimov, that the Abishta makes peace. Bim Reimov in the upper worlds. What does it mean that God makes peace in the upper worlds? What is their, what is their arguments in the upper worlds? Oysa Shalom Bim Reimov is that in the upper world, you have Chesed and Gevura, and where you're starting from the world of Atzillus, from the world of emanation, you have the concept of Chesed, kindness, and you have the concept of Gevura, you have the aspect of, of, of severity, of strength, where they are opposites in, 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 in essence. There are, there are differences, they're, they're totally different, they, they, their accomplishment, their purpose is different with each and every one of them. But then the Abishta makes peace. How does God make peace? What is he, a negotiator? But uh, the point is that that uh, the, when there's Gilil when the, when 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 Chesed and Gevura, when these two attributes, as they are in the upper worlds, realize that they're both created by God, and they both have a mission, they all both have a purpose. So then there has to be peace, because if 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 there wouldn't be peace, there would not be a purpose. The, the, the God wouldn't be able to affect His purpose in the world, and therefore. We should also realize the same thing that uh, that uh, there has to be peace. The, the doesn't ha- that the Abish didn't want to create a world of the same thing, right? We say that through this contraction that God did, you have every kind of a situation in the world. You have every kind of person in the world. And two people don't think the same and two people don't feel the same. And nevertheless, God wanted Avas Yisrael. God wanted that to be love between each other. And there's a mitzvah to have Avas Yisrael. There's a mitzvah to have uh, Shalom Bayis. There's a mitzvah to have peace at home. Why? Because it's not a mitzvah that the person should be like you. It's not a mitzvah that we should uh, do the exact same thing. It's a mitzvah to love each other. And uh, and that's what we need to learn. that, that uh, Why? Because we're, both, we're all on the same mission. We're all on the same journey. Even though we're different, we actually enhance each other. As if you learn Torah, you learn Chassidus, you'll know that there's a mitzvah in the world that can nobody else can accomplish in this world but you. And the whole world, and not only the whole world, but everything in the world and all the generations of the world are all waiting for that mitzvah you're going to accomplish because that's going to bring a completion to the purpose of creation and the purpose of this whole journey that Am Yisrael is going through for thousands of years. So get to work. Traction, you know, so let's go to that, the, the 16th of Shvat. Traction are all in the manner of a veiling of, of God's consonant. That's what the contraction, not that there's a separation, not there's a concept of total separation between God and the world. It's that God, because God, there's no concept of hiddenness either. There's no concept of separation. There's no concept of hiddenness by God. The whole concept of, 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 of Hester, the aspect of, of being something that is hidden is by us in this aspect, that it's hidden to us. And therefore, Baruch Hashem, it's hidden to us. Imagine you go to, you go to a professor that cannot contract himself. He's going to give you the class the way he, he thinks it is. Nobody will understand what he's talking about. Right? You have to have, if he's talking a, a big professor, he needs to contract himself. He needs to... He needs to do gavura within himself. He needs to hide his true uh, wisdom and bring it down into an analogy, bring it down into a story, and bring it down to something that is... Uh, I'm holding at the top of the right column on page 90. So that's what I'm holding. So uh, so, so the, 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 the professor needs to contract himself so that what? So the student will have a, will have a comprehension, will, have a, will be part of the class. Correct? So too, not that the 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 the, the, the uh, professor needs to contract himself for himself. He doesn't need to hide his, his wisdom for himself. He needs to hide it. He needs to diminish it, so to say. But the wisdom is still there. That's why it's called a simon. A simon is a sign. A sign, an analogy means that it has within it the whole the whole concept. It's dust hidden within it. 
but the but the, what, what is but the essence is still there. That's why the Alter Rebbe and Tanya today, uh, in the chitas of today, the Alter Rebbe expressed that you shouldn't think that God's essence is not there, right there, with you. The chas v'shalom, the essence of God. When you learn that the that when something is hidden, the essence is not there. The essence of God is right there. He's right there. As he's there in the most spiritual worlds, in the most godly worlds, God is part Hashem Echot. That's what you say in Shema. God is one with you right now, the way you are in this world. In all your pain, God is in pain. Yeah? Blessing which is closed in them. His essence and being, blessed be he. And it's only issue from him, just as speech of a human being issues from his soul. Yet it's regarded, regarded to a holy one, blessed he. No concealment or veil hides or obscures anything from him. Hey, Bish, there's no concept, there's no concept of symptom, there's no concept of a contraction, there's no concept of anything that's hidden. Everything. By God, Ani Hashem, Leisha, Nisi, I am God, I do not change. Nothing changes with me. And that's why it says, so that to him, darkness is like light, as written, even the darkest obscure, obscures nothing from you. We say in our diving, Yetzir Oyer, Uvayda Chayshik. The Abish that created form light, and he created darkness. And darkness does not, in that, in that statement, darkness does not mean darkness of the day. It means darkness in the world. It means tzadis. Tzadis. Darkness. The Abish to, to God both have a mission. As we say on, on, on Purim, to God, you have to get so drunk that you don't know the difference between Ar and Haman and Baruch Mordechai. Because there is no difference in the, in, the, in, in, in the journey of what God wants in the world. Haman has a place, even though by us, we don't understand it. We can't, it's can't hard for us to comprehend what, what this concept. But to God, there's a purpose in the good and there's a purpose in the opposite of good. Yeah. Go figure it out. <laughs> That's it. There's a purpose in everything. And uh, we all have to connect to that purpose. We all have to connect to that purpose in the best way that we can. Yeah. Whose garments are part of his body. Therefore, we, we have to realize that Chas V'Shalem, you know, there's a beautiful medish. There's a beautiful Pirkei office yesterday in the Pirkei office. It says, it says, that things that were created on Bain Hashmoshes. You said the fifth chapter. Things that were created on Bain Hashmoshes. Bain Hashmoshes means that God created the world in six days. And then there was six, on the sixth day, you have, you have a time between uh, Lichbenchen, between actually Shkia. Lichbenchen is 18 minutes before Shkia. So between sunset and night, you have a, there's a span of time. It's called in Jewish law, Bain Hashmoshes. It's between, Twilight zone. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's between the times. That's what Hashmoshes means. Between the times. It, it, it's not clear what it is. It, is it part of the day or part of the night? So it's a question. If you're born, Ben Hashmoshes, if you're born in that time, what are you, which, what, what, when, when were you born? On the day the, and the day, or you were born the next day? So it's a question in Jewish law. If you were born, that's why you, when some when you when you when you if you know your birthday in Jewish law, you have to know exactly first of all when you were born in a day changes your birthday. So if you're born in in at night, then it's the next day. So you, even though in England in America you're, you're still part of you're born Wednesday night, it's still Wednesday, and your birth certificate is say Wednesday, but in Jewish law it's Thursday. So you're born on Thursday. The question is Ben Hashmoshes in between. Sunset and the three stars. You have like a forty-minute uh, span in between those those two times. Different. It's differently in different places. How much time it is. 
And uh, that's called the twilight. So the Mishnah says that uh, even though God finished creating the world in the sixth day of creation, he had certain things to finish off in the twilight zone. In the right, so he created the to the mouth of the donkey, and uh, it's an interesting mission. And then it says, "We yes, Shemrim." You listen to that mission. It says, "We yes, Shemrim." Some people say that also was created in that time was created the mazikin, the mazikin, the uh, those that uh, cause trouble in the world, the angels of of of, of uh, destruction, and seva and tw- and and tongues, tongues. Tongues. A tongue. A tongue. Tongue. Tongues. Tongue. 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 It's a tool. Tongues. Right? I'm not making that up. Tongues. Because because how do you make a tongue? How do you make a tongue? You have to make it with a tongue. So who created the first tongue? So uh, who created the first tongue? The Mishnah says was created on Ben The Abish to created the first tongue. So it's an interesting Mishnah because, first of all, we all know we can create a tongue without a tongue. Right? You can make you can make a uh, imprint on the in, on the ground and pour it, pour it in, and you have a tongue. So you don't have to create a tongue with a tongue. So what does the Mishnah mean that the tongue that the first tongue was created by God? And then the interesting the Mishnah the Ashamrim these this Rabbi puts mazikim with tongues. What does tongues have to do with mazikim? What does tongues have to do with the, with the destructive forces in the world? Why, why would the Mishnah, why would this rabbi say, put it together? Yes, I mean, if you look at the Mishnah, Mazikim, Bitsava, Bitsava, Suya, that you have a tongue. A tongue, right? Yeah, chapter five. Yesterday's picking up. So, tongues. So, the, the rabbi says, what well, it tries to answer this, it gives an answer to Rabbi this. Buckley, could you spell that, please? It sounds like tongue, like in your mouth. No, tongues. T-H-O-N-G. No, No, that's tongue. Tongue. Like this. No. No, it's not TH. It's like a scissor that holds something. Not a scissor. It's a. It's a if you make barbecues, it? you know what a tongue is. Oh, yes. But you guys make barbecues, you have no tongues. A Sunday barbecue, you have a tongue. Got it. What does that mean? He created tongues. T-O-N-G-S, correct. T-U, rabbi. No, T-O-N. Okay, I'm going to look it up right now. Let's Let's go to the Mishnah. Relax. Look here, look here. Relax. Rabbi. Everybody can relax. I got a visual. You got a visual? Visual aid. Look. Huh? No, that's good. That's a tongue. It's clear. That's a tongue. This is Correct. my meat tongue. <laughs> okay. Where's the Mishnah? Okay. So it's a Mishnah picky office. It's yesterday in chapter five, verse number mission number six. But yeah, shame him. And some people say. Uh, some people say, and some say the spirit of destruction as the well as the original tongues, T-O-N-G-S. For tongues must be made with tongues. That's the Mishnah. That's the Mishnah. The Mishnah is telling you a reason. Because tongues need to be made with tongues. So uh, how do you make the first tongue? The Mishnah need needed to make the first tongue. That's the Mishnah. That's the Mishnah picking yeah. up us. So the question is asked, first of all, you don't need to make tongues with tongues. That's not per se that you need to make it that way. You make a tongue through making a uh, form and pouring the lead into the form, and you have a tongue. You make a tongue. So why, why does the mission say tongues are made? Because David had to make the first tongue. And also, what's the connection between mazikin and tongues? The Rebbe answers that we realize in our lives, in our lives, to reach a point in life, in any kind of aspect of life, to accomplish something in life, you have to go through a big journey. You have to go through a big journey. It's not a simple thing to accomplish things in life. Whether you you're going through, uh, you're going, you're becoming, you you educating yourself, whether you're going through a tsar, whether you're going through a rough period in your life, 
It's a, it's a journey. A yid has a journey. A human being has a journey in his life. And he might think that this was a, basically, this, this journey is a waste of time. This journey is an evil part of his life. It's something that he should wipe away. Something that he should just get rid of. Something that he should just, uh, you know, it's like, God, what does God What does God have to do with it? It's something that I need to eradicate. Comes the Mishnah and tells you, that no, that the tongue, what is a tongue? What do you need a tongue for? The it's the, it, right, it's to list something else. Tongue has no purpose in itself. The tongue is only there for something else. Extension of your arm. Right. So I need to have I need to have help to get to, to pick up the thing. So I have a tongue. I have a tongue. The tongue in itself has no purpose in it. It's not a fork. It's not a it's not a utensil that you use to eat. It's a utensil that you use for something else, for for for, for, for to reach something. So you might think, who cares about a tongue? Comes the Mishnah and tells us the Avish to create the tongue. <laughs> Just like the mazikim. You might think, what is the purpose of mazikim in the world? Why would the Abish to create mazikim? Why would the Abish to create destructive angels in the world? Why would the Abish to create struggle in the world? It's not God's creation. That's what some people, great philosophers, hold, you know, that God he didn't create, he, 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 you know, the, the, the evil human. Struggles is human. Now, Comes the Mishnah and tells you everything has a purpose. Whether it's a tongue, whether it's the journey, something that you're using to accomplish something, whether it's the imazikin in your life, the negative things that happen in your life, all created by the Abish. It was all created by God. And God created this, this thing, Ben Hashmoshes. God created this thing, it's the biggest struggle in a human being. The biggest struggle in a human being is that Ben Hashmoshes, what is it? Is it part of the day? Is it part of the night? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it... Maybe she says, I created it. I created Ben Hashemoshes. I created Twilight, Twilight Zone. So you go through the struggle in life, in the struggle between good and bad, in your own personal struggles, you'll realize, hopefully, that all your struggles was a tongue to get something. All your issues in life was a, was a, was a purpose to an end. It was not there for no reason. It was not there to hurt you. It was not there to destroy you. It was not there to, it was there as a tongue. It was there that you would be able to grab the, the thing. You'd be able to reach something. You'd be able to accomplish something. Yeah, but people will destroy it. Yeah, people okay. People destroy Listen. themselves. Yeah, okay. I'm not saying, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the, the, that's what the Mishnah says. The Mishnah says, don't destroy yourself. Look at everything in your journey. As a, I'm not saying this is easy. <laughs> um, you look at everything in your journey as, as a, 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 a as a positive end, and as a uh, as 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 part of that journey of life. So Yitzchak Oyer Uveira Chayshik, as I said, the Eibush that created light, and he created darkness. Actually, by Jews, as I say, if you're at nighttime, you're part of the next day. The Chazal say it says. The point of that, why does by, by Torah the evening comes before the, before the day? It doesn't go the other way. By us, you go the, the, the day, it goes till to, to, to the next day. Because darkness always leads to light. The night leads to the day. The night leads to the day, and the night becomes day. If you know how to use the night, the night becomes day. Yeah? You with me? Yeah. Okay, good. At least God wanted a martini and he needed <laughs> tongues to put the ice cube. There you go. Okay, that's, that's your interpretation. Let's go back to it. One of the reasons. One of the reasons. So for all the contraction and the garments are not, are not distinct from him, Not we shouldn't think that the contractions of God that the hiddenness, that the darkness is, is something that God, so to say, is out of control. Right? There's a book. There's a, God, God doesn't control evil. Right? God doesn't control evil. He let, he let evil uh, have its free reign. Right? 
Chas v'shalom. Maybe it's control of everything. So you say like, that's why you should pray to God. You should scream out God. As 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 the Torah says, when you're in pain, you should scream out to God because He's the one who is the. He's ultimately the one who's responsible. Whatever, he's responsible. He needs to take care of it. He needs to take care of it. He needs to send you to the right messenger. He needs to get you the right doctor. He needs to do that. Yeah? Why does he need to do that? It might sound a little, uh, that might sound a little aggressive. Uh, why does he need to do it? Because the Abish has a mission in the world. The Abish, God wants the mission to be accomplished, then he needs that we should be healthy. And he needs us to be wealthy. Because if not, we're not going to accomplish the mission. It's hard for us to accomplish the mission. It's difficult to accomplish the mission. So if I give you a mission to do, I'm going to make sure that you're going to, that you're going to be able to accomplish the mission. Why would I give you a mission that you can't accomplish? Why would I ever give you that's why the, the Mishnah says, Ainakadish Barhu Baba Turinubra, the Abish doesn't give something that he, uh, to somebody they can't handle. Because if he's the one who gave you the mission, if he gave you the tsar, then he needs to then it needs to then he needs to make sure that you can handle it. If you cannot handle it, then you need to scream out to him what's going on. That's prayer. That's the concept of prayer. Can you clarify something? Sure. I thought, I thought I heard you say that God is not control of the evil. He is control of you. People say that, Chas But he isn't. He is in control. He's in total control. He's in total control. Total control. Total control. He decides everything. He decides everything. So the Abish gave us the, 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 the God gives us the, the, the good and he gives us the challenges. Mm -hmm. So when he gives you a he gives me a challenge, I need to know how to deal with it. Can't blame anybody else. I need to blame God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think there's a lot of politicians blaming their wives. <laughs> <laughs> Don't to be a politician to blame your wife. We all blame no. our wives. It's heaven, but everybody like a snail whose garment is part of his body. As it's written, the Lord, he is God, as expressed elsewhere. Therefore, in his presence, all else is no account whatsoever. And that's why if, you, if, we, if we can create that we're in the presence of HaKadosh Baruch, Hine Hashem Nitzav Olaf, if I can can create this concept that God is on top of me and he's watching me, then there's no issues. There is issues, but it's no value. It has no value. My issues have a value because I think that the issues are bigger than, than, than God. What is the expression I saw? Don't tell God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big God is. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I think I thought that expression. So. so that's the point. If I believe in God, if I have a Muna, which hopefully every Jew has a Muna Sashem, every Jew believes in God. So then if I believe in God, then the, the, everything else is secondary. Everything else is small. In comparison to God. So chesed is much bigger than all gevura. You have to, like the Rebbe said, we learned in the Sicha, we learned to, like Thursday, we learned that, 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 that uh, a Jew has to not be a kfu toif. He has to not be ungrateful. And uh, even though there's problems, but good is much greater than, than, than bad. So you don't have to deny the problems. You don't have to do, uh, live in a, in, a, in a fake world. You're living in a real world. There's problems. 
But that doesn't take away from the good. And there's greater good than evil. There's more chesed in this world than gevurah. And if you don't, you, and that's why you get up in the morning and you say the ultimate good, the Abishta gave me back my neshama. What could be greater good than that? So if you understand that, if I understand that, then everything else is trivial. Everything else is trivial. Like I said, you cannot complain if you're not alive. But Hashem, you're alive. Now you can complain. You're allowed to complain? Yeah, because yeah. you're alive. Wow. Complain. But if you're dead, you can't complain. So what is greater? That I'm alive. Because I'm alive, I can complain. And if I shouldn't complain, because, the, because I'm alive. I'm alive. I should, I, should, I should realize the greatness of life. And without life, I have nothing. So what is it? In, what is it in, in, in it? That's why some people, when they're so bad, they say, I want to die. That life has become irrelevant. God forbid. A person should never come to that. But some people do come to that situation, in their mind at least, that they think they have no value in life. A person should have value in life. As we say in, in our brachas every morning, that we thank God that we can see those that can see, we can hear those that can hear, we can walk, we can eat, we can sleep, we can do so many things that are such a gift that the Abishta gives us, that it's much greater this gift than anything than all the things that are, b- are bad that are happening in this world so we need to verbalize and that's how we daven what do we do in, in our daven we praise the Abishta. that's the majority of the davening is praising God and then we come we ask God to heal us and to give us money but the majority of our prayer is to praise HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to realize the greatness of God and that Baruch Hashem we are a Jew also, the realize the greatness that we're a Jew. Not only that, that God is great, that you're a Jew. That's an unbelievable gift. How much is that value? What's the value of that? What the Rebbe would say, as long as you can do a mitzvah, you should be as happy as can be. As long as you can do one mitzvah today, you should be as happy as you can be. Is there, is there, is there maybe a situation you can't do other mitzvahs because you're sick, you don't have this, you're that, whatever. Okay, but can you do one mitzvah? If you can do one mitzvah, who tells you how many mitzvahs you need to do to be happy? Nobody tells you one mitzvah. <laughs> Not that you can do one mitzvah is, is you should be the happiest person. The Gemara says you should stand up for a person that does a mitzvah. He doesn't say you should stand up for a person that does a lot of mitzvahs. If you're a person, every Jew does a mitzvah. Malayim mitzvahs kenima. In the Gemara, the Talmud says that every Jew is full of mitzvahs like a pomegranate. So if every Jew is full of mitzvahs like a pomegranate, what, what, is, what, is uh, what is one unhappy? How is it possible to be unhappy? How is it possible to be depressed as a Jew? That's why depression in Judaism is an opposite. It's an oxymoron. It's an, it's an, it doesn't make sense. In the world, it does make sense. But as a Jew, to be depressed, doesn't make sense. One mitzvah, I, I, I create the whole world. I, I do the Avedit Hashem. I, I do what God created the whole world for. So how can I be depressed? Anything you did. Anything you did. You did a mitzvah, you should be as happy as, as can be. That's it. Because and if you're not happy, which we are, which we struggle with this, is because most we don't have a minus Hashem. That's it. We don't understand, and it's nothing. That's not even terrible because we're humans. We push it. Don't comprehend what a mitzvah is. We don't comprehend what a mitzvah is. We don't comprehend what God is. We don't comprehend what a mitzvah is. That's the beauty. So the Abishta wanted that every Jew should be happy with some machta. He is a ach samer. A yid needs to be happy. Because Baruch Hashem, 
He can do a mitzvah. As long as he's alive, he can do a mitzvah. That's a cute story to tell you yeah. about it. Everybody knows, I think, here that I have uh, an injury on my neck. So I was I, I used to swim a lot, and there there was a ring that was went into the bottom of a pool, and nobody could get to the bottom of the pool. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try, and they wouldn't let me dive in because they know that I had got hurt. So I have to dive in myself from the water to get this earring. And I went in, but I didn't get the earring. But when I went in, I twisted my head and it hurt so badly because it cracked. And I got out of the water and all of a sudden it did such great relief on my neck. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. So I called up my son. I said, Ruvain, I said, I want to tell you something. He goes, what mom? I said, I went to help somebody get a ring in the bottom of the pool. And I got a mitzvah by trying to get the earring and turning my head under the water gave me such a Adjustment. adjustment in my neck mm -hmm. that it cracked and I and it really really helped me and I want you to know that I got the mitzvah of trying to get the earring but I did it so I want and he goes but mom you didn't get the earring so you didn't get the mitzvah I said no Ruben I got the mitzvah of trying to get the earring just the same as if I got the earring. And he goes, wow, you've always told me that trying to do a mitzvah, but not accomplishing it worked. But you've always told me this in life, and now you just proved it. Beautiful. Okay, let's go by to chapter 22. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who said, no, no, don't comprehend what a mitzvah is. So right. can you help us comprehend that? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? What was the question? Easy question. Uh, help us comprehend what a mitzvah is. So you, so a mitzvah is the connection between your neshama and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Mitzvah comes from the word tzaf sevichida. There, there are many concepts in a mitzvah, you should know, on many, many levels, what a mitzvah is. But a mitzvah comes from the word tzaf sevichida. It means a connection between a yid and a kodesh baruch It's a connection between a Jew and God. And that connection is an eternal connection. And every mitzvah you do, you're simply bringing godliness to the world. Whether you see it, or don't see it, you accomplish what the Alta Rebbe calls Didabatatainim. You accomplish the concept of, of what the Abish that created the world was Lasis, like Didabatatain, the God who wanted a dwelling place in this world. And every mitzvah you do, you accomplish that. And that's the purpose of creation. And that's the purpose of why you came down to the world for. And that's the purpose of, of, of this journey to bring godliness to the world. And you should be happy and satisfied to do God's mission. Every mitzvah, in general, you have three mitzv three categories of mitzvahs in the Torah. Chukim, which are decrees, adios, which is a which is a testimony, and and uh, and uh, mishpatim, which is the law. It's the basic principle. In general, the Torah divides these mitzvahs into three different these three categories. Mitzvahs that are between man and man, don't kill, don't steal, which the Gemara says we could have learned that from even an animal, that we shouldn't kill and shouldn't steal. Mitzvahs that are atheists, that are, that are, are a testimony to something that, it, that, is, that, is, that it happened in, in, in the world, like Shabbos, the creation of the world, like Pesach, the redemption of the Jewish nation, like we're coming up in two weeks to Matan Teda, we celebrate Shavuos, which is a, 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 a testimony to that situation. And then you have Chukim, which are decrees, which God said to do, and there's no reason to it. They're keeping kosher. 
shatnas, etc., etc., like purity and impurity, is all the chukim. But the truth is, every mitzvah should be done on these three levels. Every mitzvah should be done as a concept of a mishnah. We try to comprehend the mitzvah, which is the mishpat of the mitzvah, which is the law of the mitzvah, which every person should know the halacha. Every person should comprehend every mitzvah that he's supposed to do and how to do it and in which way to do it and why do it at this time and not at that time, etc., etc. We should all know every halacha. We should try to know every halacha in the Tera. And it's very intri- it's very it's very it's very uh, complicated Allah as you really come to come learn Hilcha Shabbos. You know, it's not a simple thing, the Allah, the simple law is not so simple. It's very it's very complex. But we should know it. Hashem, zu Allah. The word of God, that's Allah. If you really want to connect to the word of God, that's Allah, knowing Allah. To know Jewish law. Mufta kala shayna halachis. Whoever learns Jewish law, muftach leishu ben oilam haba, he's promised to the world to come. To know halacha, to learn halacha to the best of your capability. That means that even halachas that are that are, are beyond our comprehension, like the laws of Shabbos, you know, whatever, it's halacha the Tera, and the laws of Mukta, whatever, it's 39 halachas on Shabbos. You should know that halacha to the best of your, your ability. Is it a hope? No, it's an it's a edis. Yeah. But we should know, edis is a sign. Really, the concept of edis in halacha, really, edis is to reveal something. Edis, you don't need witnesses to something that is known. You need witnesses to something that is unknown. And they reveal that it's that it happened. I don't need witnesses that it's daytime. That will be irrelevant witnesses. It's not important. That's why things that are, are, are going to be known, you don't need witnesses either. We don't need witnesses for things that we know. We need witnesses for things that they reveal. That without them, we might have not known. Like you have witnesses that somebody did something. Or somebody that we don't make me if without these witnesses, we may never ever know. That's why the Taylor tells you if you know something that is not known, and it's gonna help you help the world, or it's gonna help the world positive or the negative, whatever, you have to say witness. Because if you're not gonna say witness, it will never be known. I have uh, uh, you have to be a witness. And they have uh, astronomical calculations. In right. Right. And still apply the That's exodus akasov. That's why you look at the Gemara. The Gemara says it's exodus akasov. That you're right. The Chachamim knew that knew when they did, but the Abish said you have to have witnesses. So there are certain decrees, so to say, where God says you got to have a witness. It's going to be known anyway. You're right. That's exactly the reason. That's why the Gemara says if you learn the Gemara in Kiddush Achidish. It says it's exodus akasim, and that's why today we don't go in witnesses. <laughs> we go in calculation. In the Beis Hamikdash, it was exodus akasim. As the Torah said, you needed witnesses, even though we really didn't need to have witnesses because they figured it out exactly. And that's why you learn the Gemara Kiddush Achidish. You have to have both. If the witnesses were totally off the off the off the map, you you would say the Chacham would say it's impossible. It's impossible. You, you, you saw something else. It's impossible because it doesn't come out. It doesn't come out. Uh, uh, what do we use the word? Astronomically, it doesn't come out. It doesn't compute. Something's missing or we're missing something. So the Abish said you have to have witnesses. But I, that's my Kiddush HaKesh. In general, but in general, witnesses is there for something that might not be known. And that's, a, that's the concept of a witness. I'm just going to give you an analogy. The concept of a witness is that you bring out to the, you bring out something that it was hidden. That's the concept of a mitzvah, the edus of a mitzvah. The edus of a mitzvah is to bring a yid brings out something that was hidden, something that is not known to the world. It's above the world. Mishpatim is things that is known. We can understand the halacha. I can comprehend. I'm using my brains. Edus is not something that's known. You do every mitzvah because of an edus. You're an aid. 
atem tiu edai, the Mishnah says. You are my witnesses. So by you doing a mitzvah, you're revealing something in the world. By a year doing a mitzvah, you reveal something in the world. That is not known. And that's his avayda. Ultimately, you do a mitzvah because of the mitzvah. It has nothing to do with what's revealed and not revealed or what it makes sense or doesn't make sense. You do the mitzvah because of chukah. Because of the mitzvah. Because th- that's what the Ebishter wanted. And that's the mitzvah. Finished. It's not because of my gain. It's not because of my loss. It's not because of what's going to be revealed or not revealed. I do the mitzvah because that's a mitzvah. Because there's a mitzvah. The 613 commandments. That's what the mitzvah is. And that's the hook of every mitzvah. What's the connection to Shabbos? So Shabbos has all these things. I can do the Shabbos because Shabbos is a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. In a crazy world, Shabbos is a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day and it's a great day for, for every Jew to disconnect from the world. It makes a lot of sense that you should do that. Pasha, it makes sense that you should put, your, Pasha, put your side a day and, and, and separate yourself from the world. It makes a mamish a lot of sense. It's a healthier day. Shabbos is an aid that the Abish created the world. We're showing a testimony. By doing this, not only because of the, the Shabbos is giving me joy, because Pasha, I'm, I'm, I'm showing the world that I believe in God. And that's my testimony to the world. What is really Shabbos? Shabbos is a mitzvah. The ultimate concept of Shabbos, it's a tzadah mitzvah Hashem. That's it. I do the Shabbos because that's what God is the mitzvah of Shabbos. So, and, and, I, and I'm doing the mitzvah because of the mitzvah, not because of any, anything else. So if you're doing a mitzvah in private, how is it Avis? Because the truth is, Shabbos is not only aidus to, to the world. It's aidus to my nefesh of Bahamas. It's an aidus to myself. Oh. When I, it's an aidus, a witness to test. I'm, I'm revealing something myself. Halavai uh, can reveal it to the world, but it, but even to yourself is also your nefesh of Bahamas, to my own animalistic soul. It's also a revelation that I can that I can. Uh, like I always have arguments with my friends who were big smokers. They didn't smoke on Shabbos. Self understood. That showed you you don't have to smoke. <laughs> If you, you know, they said that you know, they can't live, you, 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 you could live. So the Abish just showed you, you, you're not saying the truth. Because you could live. You simply could. And you do live without it. And that's the truth. So the Abish just shows you on Shabbos that whatever, if you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to follow the halacha, the Abish showed you on Shabbos that whatever you thought you couldn't do, you could do. It's only your mind you decided you can do. That's why you say on Shabbos, that's why it's important. Whether you, it's not important, I mean, it is important. Whether you keep the whole Shabbos, you keep part of the Shabbos. Every Jew should keep part of a Shabbos. So if he smokes a whole week, let him not smoke on Shabbos. Talks on the phone a whole week, let him not talk on the phone on Shabbos. No, serious. So even though he does other things, let him not talk on the phone on Shabbos. Let him show himself that what he thinks he cannot do, he could do. And when it comes to the wor- when it comes to worldly matters, that he could do, he can live without the newspaper on Shabbos. He can live without the phone on Shabbos. He can live without smoking on Shabbos. So he should do that. He shouldn't think it's all or nothing. He should keep the Shabbos in, in whatever he, 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 he can keep the Shabbos. Because trust me, Nobody's keeping the Shabbos kil I may not even say that, or Shalom, whatever. It's hard to keep the Shabbos kil So, So, therefore, we're going to evaluate this key guy keeps Shabbos, this much, this guy keeps Shabbos, that much, I can keep the Shabbos, the other much. Everybody should keep the Shabbos to the best of his abilities. And he should realize, he should separate himself from things on Shabbos, and so too and everything else. If he doesn't keep kosher at all, doesn't mean he doesn't have to keep kosher and everything. He should stop something. You should stop eating whatever, one thing. Start, stop one thing. That's it. Stop eating certain things. Show himself he can live without it. I he's still eating non-kosher. Stop one thing. Stop eating non-kosher, one thing. There's so many non-kosher products. So too in so too in every so too you can take this concept in everything, right? If you're if if you're if you're an angry person. Stop being angry, one thing. It's not all or nothing. 
Stop being angry in one thing. If you have a struggle with happiness, start being happy uh, one day of the week. <laughs> start somewhere. Start being happy one hour a, a week. Start at one hour. Maybe a whole day might be a problem. Start being happy one hour. And save upon him the office. Read everybody. Fake it. Fake it. Uh, fake it. Fake. But it's not. Sid says you're not faking because you are happy. Sid says you're not faking it. Being unhappy is not natural. Being happy is natural. Being unhappy is not a natural phenomenon. The Abish that created us all happy. The Abish that didn't create unhappy people. He created happy people. Healthy people. Happy people. And therefore, being unhappy is an unnatural state. It's the Choshech. The Abish created the Choshech. He created this Taka, but it's unnatural. He doesn't want it. He wants it there. He's a, it's a tongue. It's not there for, for... It's a tongue. Get rid of the tongue. Use it out for, the, to, 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 for something. Yeah. Beautiful. I don't know how to get the shot. Uh, uh, the what? I don't completely get the Aiden's Shabbos. Like, I guess at Adam and Kama, I guess they have some kind of Shabbos. So they were Aiden. And what What about after that? Like, did they all, did everybody keep Shabbos up until they, I don't know what. Like, they don't kind of get it conceptually. Well, I know that there's different when it comes to shouts, regarding shouts, and then remembering shouts. Yeah, I know. They realize that the Abishta created Shabbos as the sixth day of creation. But on Shabbos, on Friday night, when you make Kiddush, you connect the Shabbos to Zechali, to Yisma Tzayim. What? To the remembrance of going out of Egypt. What does Shabbos have to do with going out of Egypt? Because the Shabbos wasn't kept until we went out of Egypt. Shabbos was not connected. Actually, the Jews kept the Shabbos before Matan Taylor. The Jews kept the Shabbos in Moro, which was right after they went out of Mitzrayim. They were given the laws of Shabbos in Moro. That was right after they went out of Mitzrayim. That means they kept it. That's why they kept the first Shabbos. <laughs> So, uh, so Zechli, it's time. The truth is, can you imagine the Abish Tahara gave a gift to the world of Shabbos in the sixth day of creation? Ultimately, was not kept the Shabbos until 2248 of creation, which is Zechli, it's Mitzrayim. So, the truth is, the going out of Mitzrayim gave the Yidden to keep the Shabbos. So even though it's brought down the Medish, that Meish Rabbeinu convinced the Pharaohs that the Jewish people should keep the Shabbos, that they shouldn't work on Shabbos. He convinced them that, he should, that they should have a day off, which he's told them it should be his Shabbos. So the Jewish people were not working in, in slavery on Shabbos, the Medish says, but they weren't keeping the Shabbos because <laughs> they didn't know the laws of Shabbos. So they weren't working, but they weren't keeping the Shabbos. They were given the Shabbos this, this, when they went out of Mitzrayim, when they went out of Egypt. And that's one of the reasons why you're connected to. Because Zechli Yetzirah Mitzrayim gave the Yidin the capability to keep the Shabbos. For 2,000 years, over 2,000 years, the world was waiting for Shabbos. Didn't you say our forefathers? Yeah, but they kept, they kept the Shabbos, not like we keep the Shabbos, la halacha. There was no halachas of Shabbos. So they kept the Shabbos as a spiritual day. They didn't know the halachas of Shabbos. They didn't know the halachas. They was not revealed, this concept. Was so, the they what? What? What, what are the ways they kept the Shabbos? Yeah. Yeah, that they didn't collect the man on Shabbos. Right. But the, in essence of what I'm trying to say is that that every what what is the lesson actually? Two thousand years took for 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 the for this thing to be revealed. Two thousand two thousand years, the Abish gave the Shabbos. Nobody kept the Shabbos, La Halacha. They kept the Shabbos. The Rami said kept the Shabbos uh, in a spiritual way. We're not sure exactly what it means. But uh, but 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 they didn't keep la halacha because the halacha was not given the Shabbos. So the, for two and a half thousand years, there was the concept of Shabbos in the world. They had to wait for Yitzhak Mitzrayim to keep the Shabbos. They didn't have to be free to keep the Shabbos. They had to go out of Gullus to really keep the Shabbos. 
you have to go out of Gullus to keep the Shabbos. You got to go out of your self constraint. You got to realize you're not constrained. You have the power over yourself. Shabbos is an unbelievable power over oneself. It's one of the most difficult things for Yidin to do. But it shows a Jew that he has control. He has control. He can do it. He can do it. And that's why I, I, I say that it's not all or nothing. Because a yid needs to show, a human being needs to show he's in control. He's in control. He has choice. It's not anybody tells him what to do. He's in control. He's in control. You could stop doing something. You could start doing something, whatever it's in the positive or the negative. You have the capability to be happy. You have the capability not to be angry. You have the capability. It's not, it's, it's not true. It's not true that a person go out of Mitzrayim and you'll see, realize that making the Shabbos holy is not a big deal. Yeah, in Mitzrayim, it's a difficult concept. In your constraint that you think that you're out of control, that you have no control, that seemingly something else is in control of me, then how are you supposed to make it holy? <laughs> I'm, I'm in Gullus. I'm in, I'm in darkness. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not in control. I have no control. My mother's father, my grandfather, my whatever. Uh, the world is in control of me. Wanted to say something? So that's the beauty. You understand that? that uh, so, the, so again, Adis is even, what well, I'm trying to say, it says in truth, Adis is also, between Adis and Mishpatim is a big separation because Mishpatim is illogical. That's the whole concept of a Mishpat, is logical. And the Abishtah wants you to make everything logical because you're a human being. So make every halacha logical to the best of your ability. Let it be logical. It resonates with you. So it becomes part of your chachma. That you comprehend it. And you, 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 you live with it and you feel it. But ultimately, every mitzvah is an aid. It's, it's an aid. It's, it's, it's a revelation of something. It's a revelation of godliness. And if you want to go deeper, every mitzvah is, is there for itself. It's there for itself. It's not there for anything else. It's a mitzvah, it's, it's a rotsin. That's why it's called the, 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 in Kabbalah, if you remember the Tanya in the beginning, a mitzvah is called a varim de malka. The Zoya says it's like the bones of God. It's like your bones. Your bones is not something extra to you. Nobody wants to live without a bone, Baruch Hashem. Because he understands that if I'm missing a bone, I'm missing a chas shalom, a part of my bones, I'm, I'm not a complete person. What makes me a human being is I have 248 limbs. Baruch Hashem. Maybe she gave me 248 limbs, and I'm Baruch Hashem, I have all my limbs. Why? Because that's who I am. I don't have an extra hand. I'm a kaima shlema, that's the expression. I'm a complete entity that I have 248 limbs. And chas shalom, if I'm missing a limb, I'm missing, I'm, missing my, I'm missing something in my body. God forbid. Because my body needs 248 limbs. That's the way the Abish made it. The, the 248 misses, is that what the Abish needed? It's needed for like a limb. Can't decide, oh, I'm not going to do this mitzvah. Oh, it's not needed. That's like saying, I don't need my foot. Chas shalom. But there are times where your foot is the chas people lose their foot. Well, there are a lot of mitzvahs that you can't do. We're missing a lot of limbs. Not because we want them, we don't want these limbs. But we're missing mitzvahs. We can't do mitzvahs. So we're in Golis and with the Dobes et etc., etc. So we are a little bit handicapped in a way. But if a person loses the right hand, he says, okay, go let the left hand go. We, we, we want every limb in our body. 
So therefore, ultimately, everything's a chukar. A limb, it's like a limb. But the, the body is limbs. Your bones, you know, you don't know who thinks about it until he has his, his, his bone is hurting him. <laughs> like this, it's part of your existence. A mitzvah is part of existence in the world. So it's not, not there for other reasons. It's there because <laughs> it's part of existence. Without, without it, it's missing existence in the world. So it's the essence of, of the thing. That's a chukar. Chukar is the essence of the thing. That's what the mission says. Mitzvah, schar mitzvah, mitzvah. The real reward of a mitzvah is the mitzvah. You don't have to go to something, oh, the mitzvah, I'm going to get Ganadin, I'm going to get, that's all. That's all the, 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 the extra. The mitzvah, what? That's the icing on the cake. The mitzvah is the mitzvah. The reward of mitzvah is Baruch Hashem, I can do a mitzvah. Baruch Hashem, I have a hand. So therefore, that's what going back to the beginning. Every person should realize every mitzvah you can do, you should be happy. Baruch Hashem, I can have a hand. I have a hand. So you might have a problem with the, the ideas. You might have a problem with understanding it. You're in struggle, you're in pain, you're whatever. But in the essence of things, a Jew shouldn't have a problem in a chukah. This is the part of, the part of existence. So wh- 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 why, why do I have a problem with it? Because the essence is really connection to Hashem. Right. The essence is God. It's not connecting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the point. Connecting to God is the aid. The essence is, is God. So finish. A mitzvah is God. It's a limb of God. That's it. So what, 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 why, why wouldn't I want to do a mitzvah? <laughs> why would I have a struggle with a mitzvah? If I understand the analogy, I don't have a struggle with all my limbs. I shouldn't have a struggle with a mitzvah because it is a mitzvah. It's a baruch Hashem. I can connect to this Avada de Malka. I can connect, I can, I can, I can do what God wants to be done. Maybe she gives me a capability to do what he wants to be done. Why should I have an issue with that? Should we start 22 or should we just uh, let's start it? <laughs> <laughs> Yet since Taylor Taylor employs human language, the word of the army present, blessed be he, actually called speech, like speech of a human being. For in truth, it is so by the virtue of the descent and flow of the life force to the lower places, by the means of many powerful contractions. So ultimately, that's the beauty is that by God, since God is infinite, the, the finite and the infinite are not, a, are not a, a contradiction to him. The finite and the infinite are not a contradiction to him. And that's why we say, the Abisha comes down in speech. And a regular person, you say, oh, he can't, he's contracting himself, he's, he's, he's limiting himself. There's no kind of concept by God limitation. No aspect by the Abish that he limits himself. And that's why I said before, Dvar Hashem that the, the word of God is the halacha. You should realize that the word that halacha doing a mitzvah is God. Ultimately, is the Abish. Not the Abish is only the Abish's will and the Abish to command. Right? Usually Jews don't like to be commanded to do anything. <laughs> that's why we have a problem with commandments in general. That's why we say God did 10 suggestions. <laughs> right? <laughs> if God wants to suggest something, I can handle it. God wants to command something, I have a problem with that. <laughs> like, who's he, who's he to command? So, um, <laughs> good to be king, you say. So, therefore, we, therefore, it's not a, therefore, we shouldn't look at it that way. We should look at it as the as as a mitzvah is a is, is God connecting to God. So that's the concept of surrender, as he says, surrendering itself to the degree to the holiness of the Holy One. Blessed be He. On the contrary, one it, on the contrary, it surges up like an eagle, saying, I am, and there's nothing else besides me. Or as the utterance, my river is mine, and I made myself. So really, 
what is a person saying when he says he doesn't want to connect to that? He's saying basically, I'm, I'm my own entity. Well, 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 like I said, who God, who's God to make a, you know, commandments? You can suggest things. Why are you whoever? Would you have a right to command? And that's an arrogance. That's that that's that's the concept of arrogance. There's no next page, Rabbi. Page ninety. I I missed the page. No. Oh look, I'm making it up as it goes. That's the that's the rabbi. He has the capability to do that. Okay, so we have to stop here. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm missing a page. I'm on ninety one, ninety two, but I don't have it. I'm missing ninety two. Okay, we'll have to get it there. I know. But God bless you all, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Sunday. We'll see you, Mitch, and all next week. We will get the right page. I just think that our school is the next